Hello. It's time to get started with our Midco Advertising Webinar, How Connected TV Ads Reach Streaming Consumers. First, let's take care of some general housekeeping. Participants are all automatically muted. If you do have a technical issue, please submit it via the Q&A window on the right side of your screen. Use the drop-down to select the host rather than the panelist. We will have a Q&A session at the end of our presentation today. You can submit a question anytime during the presentation or at the end. Just be sure to use the Q&A window on your screen. Use the drop-down to send your question directly to the panelist rather than the host. Also, this webinar is being recorded. We'll send out a link via email later this week. I'd also like to thank, say thanks to everyone who's joining us today from across the region. We look forward to discussing what connected TV is and how it works, how advertisers can reach connected TV users via over-the-top devices, and how connected TV and cable TV ads work together to increase campaign effectiveness. To start, I'd like to introduce myself and the other presenters that are uh, joining us today. My name is Kim Burma, and I've been an advertising sales consultant at Midco since 1992. And although I have to say that advertising landscape has really changed over the past 30 years, I still work directly with our customers to develop and execute ad campaign strategies. I serve as a board member for uh, several local community nonprofits, and I'm a proud active alumni for the University of South Dakota. I'm joined by Andrew Uni, a local digital media consultant. For five plus years, Andrew has worked with local businesses, agencies, and national brands to plan and execute digital advertising campaigns. While Andrew's career began working with Fortune 500 companies, he now spends his time consulting local businesses and technologies and strategies that have delivered proven results through digital advertising. And Lance Mullen is also a Midco advertising sales consultant like myself. He has more than a decade working as an ad sales consultant in the Lawrence, Kansas area. Lance is the board chair for the Douglas County American Red Cross and a 2015 graduate of Leadership Lawrence. In 2017, he received the Wally Galuzzi Volunteer of the Year Award and graduated from the University of Kansas and is a huge Jayhawk fan. Before we jump into our main topic, I'd like to give you a brief overview on Midco for people who may not be familiar with who we are and what advertising services we provide. Midco serves more than 32,000 business customers and has six main service lines for businesses, including our advertising services for 1,100 customers. Our customers vary in industry, shape, size, location, and budget. We firmly believe that when our local and regional businesses succeed, so does our community. It's where we live too, which is why we're always looking for ways to give back to our communities and even welcome our business customers to partner with us to find new ways to give back. When it comes to advertising solutions, we specialize in seamlessly integrating your cable TV, digital display, pre-roll, and now connected TV advertising strategies together. By keeping the big picture in mind while we're working campaign by campaign, our team ensures that your ads not only look good, but they work too. We always keep the numbers in mind so you get measurable results. We include strategy, creative design, production, scheduling placement, and reporting. Basically, without getting too cheesy, we're with you every step of the way. Okay, enough about us. Let's get started with the main event. What exactly is Connected TV? Well, if you've done some preliminary Googling, you've likely discovered that Connected TV is when a user accesses premium professionally produced content via an internet connection on a TV. What does that mean? Let's just back up. Streaming platforms started popping up in 2007 when people began added beginning adding Netflix and Hulu to their TV subscriptions. Now, 10 plus years later, how people stream has evolved and we want instant access to all the ways there are to watch TV. With over the top or OTT devices, people can stream with convenience as they switch between platforms. Many of these devices allow users to have the best of both worlds. Users have access to their live cable TV subscription, and also streaming. These devices, including things like smart TVs, Xboxes, and Rokus, 
provides streamers with an easy one-stop shop experience that instantly connects them however they want to watch. All in all, that gives you the connected TV viewing experience. Let's check back on our definition to review. People use their connected TV devices to access their favorite shows, movies, and even live events, from football games to the Oscars, via an internet connection that streams this professionally produced content directly to the biggest screen in the home. But it might be good to give a slight clarification too. Connected TV and over-the-top devices are not the same thing. Connected TV is the actual content that people watch via an internet connection, while OTT devices are simply the means of getting people that content. In a way, you may want to think about connected TV as a subset of OTT. When it comes to advertising on connected TV, it has been and will continue to evolve as connected TV adoption rates grow. This is an especially true for local and regional advertisers. As we head into 2019 and beyond, businesses of all sizes are finding that they have more access to affordable connected TV ad placement options. However, the Video Advertising Bureau reported in 2018 that only 15% of advertisers included connected TV in their media plans. What's caused this slow adoption? For a long time, digital TV advertising didn't have the standardization in place compared to traditional TV. Cable TV relies on a handful of major media players to create, organize, and air content. Connected TV can come in many shapes and sizes from many different types of sources. Sources can vary from smart TV manufacturers to others like Hulu and Roku. Plus, cable TV ads and networks have long relied on Nielsen data, among other sources, to provide viewership information and ratings. What's changed in recent years? Programmatic buying platforms. Andrew will dive into this a little bit later, but here are a quick, uh, a quick couple reasons why programmatic ad platforms help navigate the connected TV landscape. Programmatic ad buying relies on artificial intelligence to make the best decision possible when placing and airing ads on connected TV. And programmatic platforms also give advertisers a diverse array of data from device use to geographic location, something that hasn't always been available before. Speaking of data, here's a little fact for us to think about and unpack next. Viewers spend an average of two times longer engaging on a TV versus a smaller device such as a phone or tablet. And CTV ads have a 95% ad completion rate on average, meaning 95% of ads are watched fully from start to finish. That's 32% higher than mobile video ads. But who's watching? As connected TV popularity grows, the demographics are starting to merge, reaching groups across ages and behaviors. Who is the connected TV viewer? 36% of adults ages 18 to 34 can be reached via OTT and or cable TV. Why? Young adults can be more apt to try new technology and often enjoy having more options and access. Households with kids are 38% more likely to stream via connected TV compared to households without children. I can uh, speak from experience. People who are juggling kid activities tend to be pretty busy. They're on the go and don't want to wait for their content. They want to watch when they're ready to watch and when, when they want to watch it. If I have to miss my show for a kid's choir concert or for whatever reason, then I'll stream it the next day to catch up. Also, households with a combined income of $100,000 or more per year are also 30% more likely to be streaming the content. People living in affluent households thrive on having convenience and choice, and adding CV to their viewing habits makes that a reality. Plus, nearly one-third of OTT streamers have three or more means to access content. People love having options. I could go on and on with useful industry stats, but I'd like us to dig a little more into connected TV with Andrew Uni. Before I hand things off, let's formally define a few more terms. Cable TV. You may have also heard this called linear TV. This refers to ad-supported live or broadcast cable TV programming. Over-the-top devices. Consumers use smart TVs, gaming consoles, and sticks 
such as Fire Sticks to stream. Disputer and content owners. CTV is ultimately powered by the organizations and that create content that people watch. CTV doesn't include user-generated content that you may find on YouTube, but instead features full-length video content that you might also find on linear TV. Networks. Just like cable TV advertising, Connected TV places ads on various networks via apps. With that, I'm going to pass it over to Andrew, who's going to dive into how Midco's Connected TV ad solution works and gives you insights on how Connected TV reporting works. Thanks, Kim. One stat you said earlier really stuck out to me. Only 15% of advertisers are placing Connected TV ads. I thought that would have been a little bit more. I mean, Honestly, that gives uh, new advertisers more room in the marketplace, and less competition is never a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with you there, Kim. Thanks so much. Like Kim mentioned earlier, my name is Andrew Uni. Um, I'm a local digital media consultant. Really boils down to that I get to help local businesses use the right technology to reach the right audience um, every day throughout the year, throughout their seasonality. And I also get to dabble in working with our platform developers who create the placement and reporting technology of how we actually go out there and advertise um, across all digital aspects. So I want to take a deeper dive and talk a little bit more about common connected TV devices in the market today. We already briefly walked over these um, earlier, but diving into it, right, hockey puck, your traditional Apple TV device, you've got your stick such as your Amazon Fire, very right, common device that's out there today, Roku sticks. You've also got your consoles, Xboxes, Playstations, um, right? a lot of kind of different devices when we really think about them, but they all serve the same purpose. And then in our bottom left-hand corner, we also have that smart television set. And I really wanted to dive into this one in particular because You'll see a lot of stats that are flying around today within connected TV. Connected TV, right, as of today, it's not really a fully grown product. When we think of, hey, it's in its adult phase, it's still kind of in its adolescence and figuring out some pieces within it. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not ready and that it's not good out there, right? There's a lot of advertisers utilizing this in its way, but there's also a lot of stats that are being confusing and starting to muddle up kind of the overall expectation of what it is. So one stat that really comes to mind is that you'll hear that everybody is streaming. Everybody out there is streaming. Nobody is not, right? There's no point in going after TV. When in actuality, we find that that's not the case at all. But the reason and where this stat comes from is from the connected TV and that smart TV itself. Today, the majority of television sets that come off the line are actually being produced with this smart technology. And so you might hear some other folks that are out there talking about how everybody's got a streaming device. Don't confuse that with everybody who's actually streaming, right? We still know that cable TV is really the main portion of that. And connected TV is just a, really a way that, to reach an audience that has linear and also likes to stream. And then you've also kind of got a smaller audience, which are those cord cutters that we know of today. But just to reiterate, don't be confused when you hear that the majority of households are only streaming. While it is true that a large percentage of households have a device capable of streaming, that doesn't mean that they use it for that purpose. And when we think about the TV, CTV ecosystem at a high level, there are really four main gears that turn this machine. And I think it's important just to touch on all four of these points. Going from left to right, starting on the left, CTV SSPs, or supply-side platforms. Think of these folks as really the traffickers of your ads, right? The, the machines that go in there and actually place those ads within our center two columns, those content owners and those premium content distributors. So while the SSPs are extremely important in the way that we function and how we can actually go out there and place those ads, the transaction really starts to happen in the middle two columns. So in our middle left column, content owners. Content owners are much like what you would experience today and what we're all very familiar with, right? The ESPNs of the world, um, the Turners, the A&E networks, right? The Discovery networks now, also formerly known as Scripps as they merge. 
And these are kind of the different folks who are out there creating that content. And we're actually able to transact directly with those content owners to place ads on your behalf. It is very important to note that as we look into these different places, right, that some of these groups in here, such as Turner, if you want Turner today, much like we used to buy cable television back um, earlier on, right, you buy all of Turner. You don't get to kind of pull out one piece or another piece. You get all of the Turner properties within that. Within certain parts of the discovery things, and also I formerly of kind of those scripts pieces, if you want to get an HGTV, as of today, you'll also be buying Food Network. And the same thing goes if you want to exclude those. When you exclude one, you exclude all. There's no cherry picking within those different pieces. As we get into premium content distributors to the center right column, Sling TV, one of the most common um, distributors that's out there today, Direct TV now, very much gaining steam. You've got Pluto TV, Fubo TV, Samba TV. There's a lot of different um, distributors that come out there today. Well, within these distributors today, you're also not able to pick specific networks. If you want someone who's watching Sling TV, you'll get all of those folks who are watching Sling TV, regardless of what network they're consuming. And the same goes for the other distributors that are within there. And then as we get over to our center right column, we've got kind of those common devices, right? We, we talked about the pucks, we talked about the sticks, um, all of those consoles and smart television sets. Well, when we think about kind of these devices that will plug into our television set, these are really the, the main four that come out there. Roku continues to lead uh, in market share as far as the number of devices out there within households as far as a streaming service. Amazon Fire has really increased their percentage um, really just in about the last year. Um, they've superseded Apple um, and also Google within their number of devices that are out there and they're streaming. And then we've got kind of those common ones with Chromecast and Apple TV. And, you know, Chromecast and Apple TV were definitely some of the pioneers of this connected TV uh, world, building those devices, getting out there. But they both kind of ran into two main problems that Amazon and Roku were really able to identify and to really leverage to make sure that they continue to uh, gain market share and continue to, to take over that industry. And so as we start to kind of just look at those, it really came down to two main points. One, right, within the kind of our example of Chromecast, Chromecast, great price point, right, as far as kind of the economics of it. But as far as the user experience, what ended up happening was that people didn't want to stream from their own personal device, right, or from another device, um, like a Google Home device and things of that nature. And the other piece was folks actually wanted a remote control, not something to be put on their phone, but actually a separate remote control. And that turned out to be a consumer behavior that even with people who have cut the cord, they still want to have that same experience that they would have with normal television. And in the terms of Apple TV, they were actually quite the opposite. While they did have a very great product in tune with what consumers wanted, um, great user experience, they came out with the remote control and voice recognition and all that other good stuff, the one thing that they didn't do was they didn't take in the economics of that overall piece. And so in terms of Roku and Amazon, where we can go out today and find one of those devices for $29.99, when we talk about our Apple TV, that still sits up closer to the $200 mark. And that has also proven a reason why they have not continued to be a leader as far as the number of devices out in the overall United States today. The other piece to mention on Roku and Amazon Fire is they've also brokered deals with television manufacturers to go out and actually be the operating systems for these connected TV, these smart television sets and these manufacturers as they go through. So both those pieces, and as we think about that, and as we think about user behavior, which we're also going to dive into here in our next slide, those are really important pieces to also think about. But just really to go back and really takeaways from this slide, I would say is really where does the transaction take place? We purchase media from the center two columns, content owners and content distributors. One of the reasons 
with Midco that we focus on serving ads on the big screen is also due to user behavior. So as we can see here from a platform-wide <clears throat> poll, we can see, and this is very common across the entire connected TV and OTT ecosystem, is that the television set continues to have that high completion rate. As we add in mobile devices and personal devices, such as laptops and desktops, we notice that those completion rates actually fall quite drastically. And this goes into that other piece of consumer behavior that we're talking about where users and our audiences that we're trying to reach are much more committed to viewing their content on the big screen. When they view it on a personal device, we've noticed that as in line with those completion rates, folks are not giving their full attention. They're not committed to sitting and watching that episode all the way through. Now, are some folks doing that? Of course, this isn't a holistic comment saying anybody who watches on their smartphone won't watch an entire movie or episode. But what we find is that as we start to put that out at scale, it doesn't hold up to those completion rates and user behavior is showing us that folks who are watching on those other devices are not as committed as we dive into those different devices. And that's very, very important, especially when we're talking about we want to get our message out in its entirety and make sure that that is actually representative of what we want to do and make sure that our, that our audience is able to get our entire message, our entire brand out there in the place today. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and switch over my screen so we can give you all a tour of what a campaign looks like in our reporting dashboard. If you just give me one second here, I'll go ahead and pull that up. And we should see this. For those of you who were able to join us for our previous webinar, we, got, we really took a deep dive into our reporting dashboard and the different features that it has to offer. For today's intents and purposes, I'm going to go ahead and focus only on that connected TV space. Within connected TV, as some of you may remember, we still give you kind of those high-level stats up at the top of our dashboard. And within connected TV today, we're not really seeing many people trying to click on an ad on a television set and then surf within their television set. So the stats that you get and the metrics that we're focusing on today are really those ads that were served, which are impressions, the number of those ads that were completed in their entirety, and then also what's the rate of that so that we can really get a good understanding of it at scale. From there, we always want to make sure that we can evaluate our creative to be able to make sure that we can see where our audience stayed on and if they dropped off at a certain point, and we can cycle through those different creatives as needed. From there, we've also got featured networks that will give you a high-level view of those networks that you ran on with their completion rates, as well as those different connected TV platforms. Just like with our standard display and pre-roll and geofencing products, we really want to focus on making sure that we reach customers and our audience across all screen. Well, it's no different in the connected TV world where we want to make sure that we can reach folks regardless if they're using Roku and Amazon Fire, or their Vizio television set. We want to make sure that we're able to reach your audience in the most effective manner and develop a good reach and frequency within that. But we'll also make sure that we give you all the data that we have at hand, which includes the amount of impressions that went there and the completion rates across all of those different devices. With daily stats, we always want to make sure that we can see how our delivery is being um, executed and to make sure that we also get through every day with a complete breakdown of how many ads were actually served and what was the completion rate behind them. We also want to make sure that you can get an exact report of where your ads were served by zip code. Here we go ahead and lay that out in the map as well as we give you a breakdown by city so that you know where your budgets are going and have the ability to have a conversation about that with your Midco rep which allows us now to control our budget as well as control where our ads are being served. We'll also verify where those impressions were running. And again, as we mentioned, with higher completion rates, we do recommend that you continue to use connected TV for that big screen. It really gives you the, mo the biggest bang for your buck and really makes sure that your dollars are being spent wisely. We don't really stop there, though. We also want to give you that receipt for what you paid for. 
And within our platform, you're able to go down to your platform performance tab, click the download button here, which will then go up and bring up an actual spreadsheet of all of the different networks and platforms that your campaign was running on. This truly gives you a true line of transparency and allows you to verify your buy after the campaign has been run and as it's been served. Another piece to mention is that this dashboard is something that as an advertiser with Midco, you have access to 24 hours a day and seven days a week. You'll always be able to come in here. This is updated daily. And you'll always be able to come in and check your stats to verify your campaign is running. Not that it's just running, but it's running on quality networks across all platforms and in the given geography that you've set out to target. This is all extremely important information that with any buy that you perform, you'll always get with Midco. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and just switch my screen back around. So if everyone can just hang on one sec while we do that, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and get this transition back. Andrew, thank you so much. That is awesome to look at the platform and have you walk us through that. So um, thanks again. Yeah. And we thanks, are, man. yeah, and I know we're lucky to have you here to be our reporting and platform expert. So thanks again. Awesome. Thanks, man. All right. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Lance Mullen here to con uh, continue the conversation on connected TV advertising. Like Kim, I'm also an advertising sales consultant, meaning I work with businesses directly to strategize and plan their advertising campaigns. And today, I'm going to talk about how connected TV advertising fits into the grand scheme of things, so to speak, and discuss how it compares to something most people are familiar with, cable TV advertising. So when we started looking at the Connect TV platform here at Midco, we noticed how it complements our current offerings by, by extending reach, especially with cable TV. Connected TV doesn't somehow cross out cable TV advertising or the digital solutions such as display and pre-roll. They all fit together for our customers, which then that relates into your customers for that matter. More than 70% of homes are already multi-channel households, meaning they consume video content in multiple ways. These households have both cable TV and over-the-top streaming services. With that in mind, let's jump in to see how the two ad networks compare, starting with cable TV. Okay. Cable TV is great for increasing your reach and brand awareness. There's no better way to reach people on such a large scale within a certain geographic footprint and based on what and when people are watching. Watching TV is popular. Live TV accounted for 71% of total view video viewing in the second quarter of 2018. It accounts for 80% of total video viewing for all adults. People are watching TV all day, every day. 26% of live and time-shifted TV viewing is happening between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., followed by 22% of people watching between 8 p.m. and 11 a.m. Advertising on cable TV is affordable. It doesn't take a multi-million dollar budget to produce and place TV ads, which is why you see businesses of all size advertising on network channels. At Midco, we can work within your budget constraints, plus we can always place ads that we didn't create or produce in-house. Cable TV reaches users on the largest screen in their home. It's hard to look away when it's always on. And finally, cable TV ads are targeted based on network, location, and time. It's like being in the premiere of the hot new show. Next, here are some benefits of Connected TV and its advertising option. Connected TV devices have full inventory of seasons and episodes from name brand programming. This means that users have more choices in what to watch and when, and people like that freedom. 81% of OTT users say that watching whenever they want is important to them. Just like cable TV advertising, Connected TV also reaches viewers on the largest screen of their home, with 75% of streamers preferring to watch OTT content on a TV instead of a smartphone or tablet. And it's affordable, like cable TV ads. Plus, we can offer, often use the same or similar versions of cable TV ads on connected TV, meaning businesses don't have to start from scratch creating new commercials. Again, like cable TV advertising, there's a reliable viewership, just a different kind of reliable. 
They're reliable because connected TV ads aren't skippable, meaning people don't have the option to click away from the ad. And connected TV ads are targeted based on location, but use artificial intelligence to run ads when and where they'll perform best. So you don't need to worry about knowing which network to place on. And of course, connected TV is a great way to raise brand awareness, knowing your ads are showing only when people are watching. So now let's look at the two of them side by side. Wow, this is a fun Venn diagram, but <laughs> I think it's most important for us to look at the two platforms working together so you can get all of the benefits. So when you're connected TV, cable TV, and even pre-roll online ads work together, you're repurposing slightly different versions for each of the different platforms and getting more bang for your buck. Plus, you're really getting additional cross-platform message reinforcement and broader reach. In fact, because we're all about backing things up, the Video Advertising Bureau found that combining both linear TV ads with over-the-top ads doubled brand favorably. In addition, the IPG Media Lab found that adding connected TV led to a 67% increase in purchase intent per ad exposure. Basically, people are more likely to like your brand and buy from your brand with connected TV's advertised ads in the mix. It's a win-win. All right, uh, so you've heard about what connected TV advertising is and what the ad placement and reporting process is and how it's similar to cable TV advertising. But as nice as the national data is, here at Midco, we like to hear feedback from our customers truly to truly measure the value of what, they're what we are providing. Next, we're going to jump into a few mini case studies on customers who are already using the connected TV advertising platform. All right, first one up is Sterling eMarketing. Sterling was actually one of our beta customers who started using the connected TV advertising late last year, allowing us to, to test the platform. Sterling eMarketing is a Sioux Falls-based full-service ad agency that started in 2009. They specialize in serving the auto industry, but also have retail customers, dentist offices, and home builders in their umbrella of clients. Some of Sterling's clients were dealing with the fact that they were already well-saturated in traditional TV and radio mediums, and they knew it was time to expand in the new ad territory. After looking at and working in about 10 different connected TV platforms, Sterling was starting to get disappointed by what was available and what was available for clients of budgets of all sizes. By partnering with Midco, they've been able to get all the targeting and data they need to justify the placements with their clients. In their words, quote, we can see where every single impression landed, and that's important to me, and that's important to my clients too, end quote. Next is Cooper Automotive, based in Bismarck and Mandam, areas of North Dakota. They have three dealerships under its umbrella, Cooper Chevrolet, Cooper Subaru, and Bismarck Motor Company. For Cooper, connected TV is just a way to complement their current traditional TV, digital, and social advertising strategies, but an effective way to reach that 25 to 45-year-old demographic. Cooper Auto also isn't afraid to be the first in the market, testing out new marketing strategies as they become available. In fact, Cooper worked with another connected TV ad provider before switching to Midco. The issue with the previous provider was they weren't seeing their ads, and neither was anyone else in the community. Plus, the reporting just wasn't there when they knew it should be. Now they often hear, how did, how did you get on my app? Or, how did you get an ad place during my streaming? Cooper Auto told Midco, now that they have that warm, fuzzy feeling, knowing that their ads are actually running when people are watching. And with a live dashboard with results, they can see where their ads ran, what app and network they ran on, and how many people saw their ad. Midco works with businesses of all shapes and sizes. And no matter what, we love hearing how the customers saw an ad on their streaming device. From garden shops to local gyms, our connected TV advertising customers get their ads out there in front of their audience when they're watching. That way, they're never wasting their ad dollars, no matter what size their budget is. Thanks, Kim. I totally agree with you. Uh, the best part about connected TV advertising is that that it's a happy combination of both cable TV advertising with the reporting that digital ads provide. Totally agree with you, Lance. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Uh, well, this wraps up our formal presentation for the morning, and now it's time to jump into some Q&A with the questions that you've submitted via the Q&A section. 
Uh, I've got a few qu uh, questions already, but those of you that are listening, if you want to um, send those, remember it's in the Q&A to the panelists. It should be on your right side of your screen, so feel free to uh, send those questions in. So we are going to start. Our first question is uh, asks, with Connected TV, can I buy the prime time hour? Lance, so, you take that? Go for it, Kim. Okay. You can, but it, it, right now we don't recommend it. Uh, the reason is unlike traditional linear or broadcast, uh, being one ad to many households, CTV is one ad to one household. Uh, so one ad will be served to a household that is actively watching. Perfect. Okay. Our next question is, do you have a way to reach non-MIDCO subscribers? Well, I'll, I'll take that one, Kim. So basically, we are not limited to just MIDCO subscribers. With this platform, it's based across your um, IP address, your internet address. And so we can serve ads to any household that using a streaming service as we purchase them directly from the content providers. So whether you're trying to buy somewhere in South Dakota, North Dakota, Kansas, or any of the other 47 states in the United States, or um, so we can do that. Perfect question. All right. And I think somebody asked a question about placing it in another market, and I think I answered that with that. So they do not have to be Midco, and it can also go outside of our uh, advertising market. So for some reason, if you are located in Sioux Falls or Fargo, but you also have offices in uh, say somewhere in Iowa, we can also work with you in that. So perfect question. Thanks. All right. Next question. Let's see here. Here's a question for Andrew. Can you expand on the AI targeting, which is artificial intelligence, and how – sorry, it slipped up. How the AI targeting and how the process works. Yeah, so with AI targeting, what we're doing is we're going through, and there's quite a few different filters that are going into that, but in essence, right, the first thing we're doing is we're making sure that we're running it in the right area, so the right geography off the right IP addresses. And we put in other data points such as audience characteristics and things of that nature, um, and all of those different data points, while, you know, there's, there's definitely a human influence, right? We've never found that AI is the only piece that runs it, so kind of to expand a little bit further within our platform and any digital products, we're not just using only kind of that machine learning and that artificial intelligence type of stuff, right? We're, we're actually also going to be using the other piece, which is that human influence, because we really need a balance in between those. But that AI helps us to look across thousands of different data points to make sure that we're serving at the right frequency, right? So we're not blowing somebody's television set out and you're the only ad that gets seen, which is very common within um, the connected TV environment, right? We want to make sure that we're reaching that household um, at a good frequency that's not overbearing and not overwhelming. And we're also making sure that we're applying those other filters on there as far as, you know, what they're interested in, how they're going after it, all those other good pieces to make sure that we're, that we're really leveraging all those data points. And then once those data points come out, we're also looking at those completion rates to say, where are we getting better completion rates at? What types of devices are looking at that, right? And then we start to break it down from there to make sure that your um, ads and your campaigns are really going for as good of performance as possible. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Great answer. All right. Uh, here's uh, – questions are rolling in, so that's good. Um, okay. Does the – here's one uh, that comes in. Does the ad cover the page, or does it stream on the bottom – or top of the page? Are there limitations to the size of the ad? That's a question. So um, I'll take that one. And basically, um, I think there's some confusion there, or maybe not, and we could reach out to this person on the question. But I think that's asking more in the lines of uh, traditional display advertising or pre-roll. So with connected TV, these are actually when somebody's streaming content, so there is a break in the show or the program to where the ad is placed, just tr same as traditional cable TV or broadcast television, how there's commercial breaks and the ads fill in that. So I think that answers that question. Okay, uh, here's one that just came in. 
you said completion rates are higher on CTV. Is it is it still an option to skip an ad on this platform? And I can take that one, Lance. Um, so no, there is you're not able to skip the ads on um, in the connected TV and OTT world as of today. If you're buying through connected television, skipping ads is more of something that you would see within that pre-roll, kind of the the standard online video from a website and things of that nature. But great question. Great question. Perfect. And I'll, um, Andrew, I'll, I want to just kind of um, elaborate on that a little bit more, and because I know when you were showing the uh, platform, we were showing in the 90 percentile completion rates. The reason those are not at 100 percent because they're not skippable is due to the consumer is either doing one of two things. They're changing the channel and going from, say, an HGTV to a Food Network to ESPN, or they're turning the device off and going away from the device. So that's the really typically the only reason that you would not have um, a completion rate as high as uh, in the upper 90s. Perfect, perfect question. Thank you so much. All right, um, here's another question that comes in. Can you zip code target? And then there's also a couple follow-ups here. Can you time period target? And what is the priority of placement of inventory purchase? Those are some great questions. Um, Andrew, do you want to take that one again? Yeah. So, and I might have to have you um, restate those questions again, but I think okay, the first sure. one was, can, can you zip code target? So yes, you can zip code target. Um, that is the way that we put together our campaign. With that said, if you say, hey, I want a city or a DMA or something of that nature, we can also put those zip codes together for you to um, kind of complete that geographic region. Um, so you can, you can get down to as low as the zip code. So yes, you can. Um, as far as you know, as far as kind of that time period target, um, yeah, you can if you want to. Typically, we don't recommend it, and I think Kim touched on this earlier. And the reason for that is because this is a one-to-one -one relationship. So you're never going to be serving an ad when nobody's watching, right? That, that doesn't – it's not going to be a possibility. It has to be when somebody is actively watching a show or a program within that. So you could – what we see naturally is that there's more inventory, right? And our ads get placed up into, you know, 90% during kind of those prime time hours that you would regularly think it. And then it's going to kind of trail off. You might get some earlier in the day, but when you're talking kind of that midnight to 4 a.m. hour or 5 a.m., you're going to see almost no ads being served at that time. But the only people that you're going to run into are folks who are actively watching. So they could be on that swing shift. They could just be up and can't sleep. Right, but it's a very, very small percentage when we go over it. So you could, but you'll probably end up kind of hindering your campaign and actually reducing the reach that you're going to be able to get from that campaign if you start to go into the hourly placement. But to answer your question, you can. We just simply don't advise it. Perfect. Uh, and then the last part of that, Andrew, is what is the priority for placement of inventory purchase? So priority for placement of inventory purchase is based off of those direct uh, content providers, as well as some of those kind of, you know, uh, distributors that we've covered, right? Like the Sling TVs and things of that nature. So all professionally produced content, right? We're not talking about user generated content, uh, you know, like the YouTubes of the world and things like that. That's a totally different product. We're not talking about that when we talk about CTV and OTT. This is really that longer form, kind of those shows, those movies and things of that nature. So we prioritize to get onto those top tier, high quality networks um, and the programming that they offer as well. And Andrew, on a follow up on that, uh, the same person uh, asked another question, can you demo target? So to play on that, um, and I'll let you answer that also. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is, a, this is a great question, and this is definitely um, one of the challenges, right, of the connected TV world, and people are trying to tackle this uh, like crazy today. So can you? Yeah, you can. It really depends on the size of your geography and how much scale you've got. Your Midco rep can review this with you um, once we kind of get an understanding of what geography you're trying to target and how many people exist in there. But the challenge that the CTV and OTT ecosystem is really facing today is one, right, this, these devices are commonly one of the most shared devices within a household. And so when you start to talk about demo targeting, you're not going to demo target 
off of the individual that is watching that, right? It's going to be based off of the entire household. So when you start to go through these different pieces and when you start to kind of look at, am I demo targeting? There's a lot of folks out there that say, yeah, you can demo target. And we'll say, yeah, sure, you can too. But one, you've got to make sure that you understand kind of the limitations of it as well before you go after it. So one of those pieces is that they, it's at the household level, it's a shared device. So it might be targeted and it might be kind of a known device that says, hey, this is a male 18 to 35 with a certain income, but in actuality, it's the child that's watching that, right? Or it's the spouse um, or vice versa, or it's, you know, friends that are staying over, all those other things, kind of common stuff, right, that television faces today. And then the other piece of that as well is that unlike when we think about display and pre-roll and those personal devices, right, the ones that we don't really commonly share, like our cell phone and things like that, those have really good profiles. They've been around for a long time. When we talk about kind of this connected TV environment, right, the scale for all these data companies, although they're drastically growing, um, they don't have as many devices that have been identified that are out there. And I actually am kind of misphrasing that. When we're talking about devices, CTV and OTT is actually not targeted to a specific device, right? Those devices can't take a cookie. They also don't have unique IDs within them. It's all off of that IP address. So really when we're talking about kind of profiles and what we're doing, we're talking about the IP address itself and the household as a whole. So that's kind of a long-winded explanation, <laughs> but can you? Yes, check with your rep as far as is there enough data within your given geography if you only, only target two zip codes you may not have enough data and known IP addresses that match that profile you're looking for, but we're happy to always provide estimates um, of available ads that can be served within that area based off those targets. So just go ahead and check with your team on that. Awesome. That's a great answer, Andrew, and I really appreciate it. And I think you elaborated more into some stuff that probably either um, had some people bringing up some more questions or answered some stuff. So. Great answer. Okay, uh, here's another one. We've got a few more minutes here on the Q&A. Um, this one asks, you mentioned that the consumer has to watch the spots on the OTT device. For the services such as Netflix, where you pay for the dismantling of commercials, how do you counter that? Yeah, that's, and a, I great, can, that's a great one. <laughs> Go for it, Andrew. Yeah, and I, can, and I can jump into that as well. Yeah, so yeah. – to be clear as well, I think that's something that we may not have touched on um, in the presentation. Yeah, so Netflix, right? There's no advertising and you can't, you can't do that, right? What we know is that people don't just consume only Netflix, although it is one of the most popular streaming services in the United States. Um, you've also got Hulu that you can pay additional money for to not have any ads, even though I think they've got six different programs or eight different programs that they actually will still continue to serve ads on. So it's not quite 100%, but it's like 98% ad free. Um, and then the other folks, right, that are out there that are consuming all of those other channels. And what we see as far as how we can get out there and get to those folks is that when they consume those other networks that they're watching, um, whether it's the HGTV or, you know, Viacom just bought Pluto TV, right? So they've got all their movies. You've got Sony Pictures has their crackle with all of their movies on there. Um, we notice that people do want to actually expand out there. And part of that reason is because all of these connected TV devices that come out are always preloaded with the top apps, if you will, right, or those networks or those content providers um, that are out there. So it's not quite like a blank device and you just add Netflix and that's all you get. They always give you other ones, and a lot of these are completely free and they're completely free television. And what we've noticed is that people continue to kind of, if they're already streaming, they'll dive over to another one, check it out, see how it's going, and then people go through those things. So I guess to answer your question kind of and to sum it up, um, the way we counter the Netflix and the stuff like that that don't have advertising is that the average consumer is using additional services as well, and we're able to reach them through those other content providers or distributors. Great question. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, here we've got another one, and um, it asks, the person asks, can you talk about the best practices for the ad length? Is it uniform or does it depend on the provider? Um, I'll answer that, Andrew. Um, I think, you know, uh, a lot of times when we think of digital advertising, 
Uh, we also look at video pre-roll. In video pre-roll, you know, the longer the ad, the worse it is because it is skippable, whereas these are not skippable. So you're still stuck within that traditional television window of 15 to 30 seconds in length versus pre-roll that you want something under 15, you know, because it's that scroll in the yard where somebody's losing their attention, uh, you know, the six seconds or under. So uh, a lot of that, uh, that's what's nice about it when we talked earlier from a production cost is a lot of times, you know, if we've got a 15 second commercial, the client's already produced for television, it's perfect length for um, what to use there in connected TV. Plus, with the networks that we're going on, you know, you mentioned the HGTV and the food. They, there's those commercial breaks that are built into those shows, and they're typically whatever the traditional advertising link is. So, do you have anything to uh, interject there, Andrew, on that question? Yeah, I would just say, um, you know, just to sum up what Lance said, I think that was a great answer. Um, 15, 30 seconds are common. Um, as Lance mentioned, right, you can't skip them. So as far as the completion rate, we see them to be about the same um, from a performance standpoint. Um, and then there's, you know, some other folks out there that are starting to now add in and sprinkle in a little bit more of these six-second ads um, within that. But, you know, again, this ecosystem, right, when we kind of mentioned that um, in the middle of the presentation is really developing. Uh, 2019 has added a lot of attention and a lot of dollars to this ecosystem, which only allows the advancement of it to really speed up um, and really gain a lot of inertia. So as we're looking at these things, you're going to see new different types of ad formats. Um, publishers are changing the way they do it. Some of them will make you sit through, you know, more than two or three ads, right? And they make you sit through kind of a list of advertisements, and then they give you a longer period to watch your content. Everyone's experimenting what's the best for our user obviously as well they're looking at how much money they can make on that and so this is going to continue to evolve and i think we're going to see some really cool new formats um, come out and some great opportunities to continue to reach our audience um, in a different way as it as it develops awesome thanks andrew we've got a couple more questions here so if you have any that and you haven't sent a question in please do uh, on the q a panel there uh, q a to the panel this next one um, asks, what if a business does not want to advertise on specific networks or channels? Is there a way to restrict ads onto those networks? And Andrew, do you want to grab that one? Yeah. Yeah, so I would say, yeah. If you've got a business and they say, I definitely do not want to be on this specific network, we can do that. Just remember to keep in mind that some of them are selling them right, still as kind of a package. So if you don't want to be on... TNT, well, you're not going to be on TBS or any of the other Turner properties either. So just keep that in mind. But yes, absolutely. If there's a if there's a network that you see that you, you know, do definitely just cannot be on, let us know, um, and then we'll let you know what your options are. But we're really here to let you know and, and really use the full kind of scope of all the tools that are involved um, within the connected TV world. So if we can help you out, we can make something happen for you. Um, we'll definitely make sure we get into that. I think there was one question too, and I just want to make sure that we touch on it because I think it's extremely important um, as well because this will come up um, in the future. But the other piece within that as far as while we're on the term of networks and things like that, programs today in the CTV and OTT world, um, unless you're a massive national buyer that's got a lot of money and you go right up to ESPN and hand them a handful of cash and say, I just want to be on a specific program, um, you are not able to target by program in the CTV and OTT environment. Again, adolescence, right? This is developing space, so I'm sure we'll start to get some of these levers. But as of today, you cannot pick, like, I want to be on The Walking Dead. You're not able to do that in today's OTT and CTV world. Um, but again, probably coming in the near future. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. Perfect. All right. Uh, looks like our last question here is I'm going to uh, hand it over to Kim on this one is how much does it cost to do connected TV? Sure. Uh, we don't have package deals. Uh, each of the plans, uh, you can sit down with your rep and that's what we like to do is that we can figure out what your expectations are, what your geographic area is going to be. And then we sit down, build the plan, and then the price is based on where you want to reach your audience. And we can work with any budget, um, any geographic region. Best is to sit down with um, 
your rep and we'll build that together to make you a successful campaign. Awesome. Thanks, Kim. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that looks like the last of our questions, and we are kind of getting to the end of our hour. So I'm going to pass it back over to Kim, who's going to close things up. Thanks sure. for attending, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining. If you have any questions after today's session or you want to know, know more about our digital advertising services, there's two ways that you can do that. Just contact one of our ad sales managers, and they'll get you paired with your local consultant or you can fill out the request a consultant or consultation form online at midco.com slash consult. We enjoyed having you here to learn more about connected TV and TV advertising. Like I mentioned earlier, we look forward to seeing how this newer method of advertising will evolve over time and learn more about how it can help our customers. You can learn more about connected TV advertising options by visiting our website midco.com slash connected TV. Plus, you'll find more useful advertising information and knowledge written by our consultants and company thought leaders by visiting midco.com slash insight center. Again, thanks so much for joining us for the last hour or so. Just for being here today, you'll be entered to win a $200 gift card. If you've won, we'll contact you via email. And again, we have recorded this webinar so you can use it for an ongoing tool and resource. We'll send you an email with a link to the recording later this week. When you exit the webinar, webinar please take a few moments to complete our brief survey, which will appear on screen. It will help us determine what topics to cover um, in the future. Have a great rest of your day.